Tonight here in College Park, two of the top 10 field hockey teams in the country battled to an instant classic. The Maryland men's soccer team took home the national championship in 2018, and tonight here at Ludwig Field, they began their title defense. First of all, it's the Terps' first game in Big Ten play this season. It's their 10th game of the season, and they're going for their 10th win in a row. Here on the Big Ten Network, Zach Solon with you alongside Brendan Hartlove, and the Terps got out to an 11-0 run to end that first half, and that's a big reason why they're out to this lead right now along with Jalen Smith, has just been dominant on both sides of the ball. Maryland and Ohio State going the distance tonight here in College Park. Welcome back here on the Big Ten Network at the Xfinity Center. Penn State taking set one from Maryland in this matchup. I'm Zach Solon alongside Matt Levine and Matt. Penn State controlled set one, but the last time these two teams faced off, it was quite a battle as the Terps forced it to five sets. The number three ranked Maryland men's basketball team hosted Illinois in their annual Gold Rush game, and this one was filled with a rush of emotion. College Park was rocking for the Terps' first Big Ten game of the season with the crowd and team decked out in gold. But the Terps failed to strike early and started out slow. They struggled on offense while Illinois kept hitting shot after shot after shot. The Terps couldn't stop them and the Illini were up by 14 points at the half. In the second 20, the Terps started to rally back. Here's Daryl Morsell hitting a huge three to bring the game within five, psyching up himself, his team, and the crowd in the process. He would finish with 10 points on the night. Less than 30 seconds left, down by three. Who else but the senior, Anthony Cowan, nails one from deep in the gold mine to tie it. Getting right back to it on the other side, Cowan plays strong defense and draws a foul, hits a capital C clutch free throw for the one point lead, and Illinois misses the buzzer beater. The Terps hold on for the 59-58 win and improve to 10-0 on the season. Update. It was a busy Wednesday in Major League Baseball. The Yankees complete the sweep of the Orioles, winning by a score of 14-2. James Paxton gets his seventh win of the year. John Means takes the loss. He falls to 8-7. The Bombers now travel to Toronto for a four-game series this weekend. Domingo Herman on the hill tonight. He'll look to get his Major League lead tying 15th win of the year. Elsewhere around the league, the Mets continue to roll. They are now three games over 500 as they defeat the Marlins 7-2. The Tigers hosting the White Sox in an AL Central matchup, and the Southside Chicago team gets the win 8-1. Indians and Rangers playing a doubleheader in Cleveland, and the Tribe takes two, winning game one by a score of 2-0. Brad Hand gets his 28th save of the year. Indians win 5-1 in game two. Tampa Bay hosting Toronto in an AL East matchup. Blue Jays win 4-3. Ken Giles gets his 15th save of the season. In Minnesota, the Braves win 11-7, and in Houston, the Astros defeating the Rockies by a score of 14 to three to give Garrett Cole his 14th win of the season. Jose Quintana gets his 10th win of the season as the Cubs take down the Athletics by a score of 10 to one. Dodgers hosting the Cardinals in LA and LA wins two to one. Dodgers getting their 77th win of the season. That leads Major League Baseball. Also out west in Northern California up in San Francisco, the Nationals defeat the Giants four to one. Mariners host the Padres up in Seattle and Seattle wins by a score of three to two. NL Central matchup between the Brewers and Pirates in Pittsburgh and Milwaukee wins eight to three. Diamondbacks beat the Phillies in Arizona by a score of six to one. Zach Gallen gets his win in his first start as an Arizona Diamondback in Boston. The Red Sox and Royals were tied 4-4 in the top of the 10th inning before the rain rolled in and forced that game to be suspended. It will resume at 1.05 p.m. on August 22nd. You can hear a lot of action this weekend on Sirius XM. For MLB Network Radio, I'm Zach Solon. Baltimore went up 3 to nothing in the first inning and took a 4-1 lead into the sixth before the Yankees made it interesting. After a 52-10 loss at undefeated Minnesota on Saturday, the Terps have now lost three straight, four of their last five, and hold a 1-4 and four conference record. Well, as the fall sports season continues on, Maryland's winter sports teams are going through their final tune-ups before their regular season begins. Missy Mahargan and her squad now await their seeding for the Big Ten Tournament as they continue their quest for an eighth national championship. The program just announced that Maryland will face Big Ten foe Penn State under the lights of Capital One Field on September 27th of the upcoming season. Washington's Bradley Beal scored 19 points in the game and became the first player in Wizards franchise history to have 2,000 points, 
400 assists and 400 rebounds in a single season. Beal this year is averaging 25.9 points per game, the highest on the team. Now another DMV team that has been winning lately is the University of Maryland women's lacrosse team. And when I say winning, that seems to be all they can do. Maryland with a 99 to 55 victory over the Delaware Blue Hens here at the Xfinity Center and Taylor Mike Sell a big part of that. Taylor, how much did your team need this win today after a loss to South Carolina and a shaky comeback against JMU? Uh, we definitely needed it. I think it was it was big for us just to come out here and send a message. I mean, we have our our home fans in front of us. So we just try to play together and then just have a big energy surge at the beginning of the game. And today you matched your career high in points and three pointers made. You're probably not thinking about those while you're on the court, but you kind of found your stride today. What did you work on throughout the week to get there? Nothing different. Honestly, just trusting my teammates. They've been finding me all week. They find me every game. So just trusting them just like I trust them. And what's the mindset going forward into the rest of the non-conference slate now that you've got another home victory under your belt? Got a home stand coming here and then the Thanksgiving tournament. But what do you guys focus on in practice to make sure that you continue to improve? Like I said, just having that intensity on the defensive end and then just bringing the, the energy on the, the offensive end, playing together, finding people, and it's all going to come together. Thank you, Taylor. Once again, 23 points for Taylor Mike Sell today. The Terps with a 99-55 to victory over Delaware. They'll be back in action this Wednesday to take on George Washington. Zach Solon here on the Big Ten Network alongside Maryland head coach Brenda Fries. And coach, after the loss to NC State earlier this week, your team needed a big bounce back win. How did it feel to get that today? Yeah, it was great. Uh, you know, you definitely wanted to be able to see the response out of the locker room. I thought we were ready to play and uh, I thought we gave uh, great effort and energy. And Shakira Austin especially looked a lot more aggressive today than she has earlier this season. Career high, 25 points for her. What has she worked on this season that's allowed her to improve so much? Well, I think you saw the response from NC State, uh, uncharacteristic game for her. So I loved uh, her mentality coming back to practice, which uh, showed how it paid off today. So we have to continue to have more like that from Shakira. Uh, tremendous in presence for us inside. And finally, you have one more non-conference game before Big Ten challenges start. So what is your team going to work on against Georgia State this week to kind of do a final tune-up before yeah, Big Ten? Yeah, we, we talked about that in the locker room today. The next time we come out here in Xfinity is for Big Ten play, and we know what that looks like. So really fine-tuning, you know, wanting to be able to get as close as we can to uh, be the most prepared team going into conference with our defense, our rebounding, and our offense. Thank you, Coach. Once again, your final score from the Xfinity Center today, Maryland taking down Loyola, Maryland, 105-45. to Cowan Jr. in the corner, small pump fake. Tries to drive around now, dishes outside to Wiggins, who's going to drive down the line. Kicks back out, stolen away by Kangu. Didn't have the open man there. Kangu, one-on-one -on -one with Ayala, waits for it, puts it up and in. Great transition play that we've seen from Oakland. They've been able to capitalize on a lot of Maryland's turnovers. Terps up to seven turnovers now so far in the first half. Kangu, his first point of the game. Back to a one-point Oakland lead. Ayala on the ball now for the Terps. Has two freshmen down low, decides to go to the senior, Anthony Cowan. Now Ayala in the middle. It's blocked away again. Great defense so far, but the Terps steal it back. Now going all the way out, Aaron Wiggins, another pump fake. Back to Ayala, takes a couple steps in, driving through the middle, goes up and in. Aggressive offense there from Eric Ayala, and the Terps retake the lead. It was good kind of second opportunity on that play, but it was the first one where I complimented Maryland a few moments ago on their ability to be patient and not force things. The past few possessions, they've been trying to feed in passes that just aren't there. Eight minutes left in this first half. And a whistle called, going to be a travel on Daniel Oladapo. Terps regain the lead over Oakland. They're now up 19-18 thanks to that flagrant against Xavier Hill Mays. And then a couple of aggressive offensive possessions by Eric Ayala. We'll take a quick break here on the Big Ten Network. More basketball when we come back. Terps lead over Oakland. Well, both Maryland's men's and women's basketball programs are ranked in the top 25 nationally. And 
Earlier this offseason, they announced plans for a new basketball performance center here at the University of Maryland to be attached to the Xfinity Center. It would be a 60,000 square foot facility, two full-size practice courts would really be state of the art. And Brendan, Maryland Athletics has launched a fundraising campaign and are already halfway to the $36 million goal. Yeah, and that, that's a lot of change, but it's something that would really benefit Maryland. And Mark Turgeon saying that he thinks the upgrade will improve nearly every facet of the program. And that goes for the women's program as well. Both the men's and women's teams. Uh, Maryland was the only school with both their men's and women's teams ranked in the top 10 to start the season, Louisville being the other one. Now back to the action on the court here at this Xfinity Center. Dante Scott, three-point jumper is no good. Number seven, Terps with a 19-18 lead over Oakland. Been pretty evenly matched thus far. Terps with some miscommunication on offense and Oakland playing a strong defense. There on the outside was Blake Lampman. Now Kevin Kangu with it, top of the arc. Tries to go inside, Brad Brechting pulls up for three, and the big man can't hit it. Cowan able to grab the defensive rebound. Goes to Mikel Mitchell. He goes up and in. Good find there, Cowan to Mitchell. Bit of class there from Mikel Mitchell, weaving his way through traffic, and a nice little roll for the finish as well. Now Brechting back. Hill May spins around, puts one up, can't get it to go in. Mitchell grabs the rebound again. Anthony Cowan now dishes to Ayala, who's going to try and drive up the middle, up off the rim, rebounded by Lampman. Terps not able to get those shots down low to fall so far in this one. We've seen a couple of miscommunications as Ayala looked to Wiggins for a dunk a couple of possessions ago, and they couldn't get it to connect. Brechting at the top now, Mitchell trips. That's Dante Scott, excuse me. Darryl Morcell back into the game for Maryland. Lampman up top. Now Maddox Jr. one-on-one -on -one with Cowan. He pulls up for a contested three at the end of the shot clock. It's no good. Terps rebound. Anthony Cowan down low. One-on-one. -on -one, goes up. And he's fouled. Good aggression there from Cowan to try to. I talked about in the open. Now he's the one that kind of sets the tempo for Maryland. and can kind of push the floor a little bit. And you see it there. We'll take one more look here as Cowan was driving up. Contested with Kevin Kangu. Who got the hand right in there. And that will send Cowan to the line. Mentioned he needs 11 more points to move into 20th place on the Terps all-time list, uh, scoring list that is. Also needs just two more three-pointers to tie Walt Williams for 11th on the Maryland all-time three-pointers list. Walt Williams, one of the all-time Maryland greats, now a radio analyst for the team. And Sits right across from us at a lot of these media events and everything, but he's in attendance and I'm sure would have a word with Cowan at some point when he eventually breaks that record or moves higher up the list, that is. Cowan at the line. Hit the first one, misses the second one. It's a four-point Terps lead now. As Oakland head coach Greg Campy just hoping his team could keep it close in this one. It's been almost three minutes since Oakland's found any kind of points. And now Lampman inside to Hill Mays, defended there by Jalen Smith, and he's called for a walk. And the ball will come back the other way. You see Oakland starting to just kind of run out of ideas a little bit. They seem to have some creativity going before, and Maryland struggling to figure it out, but the Terps defense has done a really solid job here over the past almost four minutes. No points yet for Jalen Smith. He also was one of the Terps who opened up in that second half, game against, uh, second half of the game against Rhode Island last Saturday. And Sticks had a double-double in that game as Cowan pulls up for three. Can't hit it off the rim and rebounded by Oakland. More on Jalen Smith as he had a double-double in that game. Him and Wiggins both with double-doubles against Rhode Island. It was the first time since the NCAA tournament last year that more than one Terp had double-digit points and double-digit rebounds. Brechting sets a screen for Kanga who goes up and is denied by Jalen Smith. Back here on the Big Ten Network, Zach Solon and Matt Levine with you. The eighth-ranked Penn State Nittany Lions looking to get a sweep here in College Park after battling the Terps to five sets a few weeks ago. 13-11, Penn State leads here. As the beginning of this set was pretty back and forth. Blossom on the serve. Snyder sets, looking for Emma Schreiner, who gets a kill. Out of the timeout, the Terps gain the momentum. And with that point, Katie Myers comes back into the front row. She's been the difference maker for Maryland tonight. Really the most solid attacker so far. 
Riva sends one over, now playing back up the other way. Blossom sets for Johnny Parker. Erica Pritchard can't play it up, and it's another point for Penn State. Parker has looked phenomenal tonight. 14 kills, hitting at a 294 clip. It'll be Serena Gray to serve. She sends it over. Played out by Pritchard. Rath has to send it back towards the middle. Now Pritchard spikes one over and gets it through. Take another look here as Pritchard played it right down the middle, and Penn State could not dig it out of the hole. That was Jenna Hampton trying to make the stop. Now Nicole Alford back on it, the junior from Annapolis, Maryland, transfer from Georgia Tech a couple of years ago. Her right-handed serve is sent over, played out by Hampton, set by Blossom, and a kill attempt there. Ball lands right near us, Jada Gardner able to play it back out. And the Terps able to get the point as Penn State made an attack error. That's a great effort by Gardner. Ran all the way off the court, right to where we are, crashing into our table, but just a great effort. The ability to run off the court and still handle the ball and play it clean as well. Nicole Alford on the serve again as we're knotted at 14. Terps trying to stay alive in this match. Blossom playing it back there. Johnny Parker, a light tap over. It's sent back by Gardner. Now on the far side, Rebecca Rath is blocked. Rebos plays it back out. Alford will set, Rath will spike, and it's gonna come the other way. Penn State plays it out, set by Blossom, far side. Johnny Parker, denied! Rebecca Rath and Katie Myers there to make the stop. Terps have the lead again as we take another look. Parker went for the kill, but right there, Rath, there to send it down. Nicole Alford to continue the serve here for Maryland. Terps on another 3-0 scoring run in this third set that's been pretty back and forth, little run after little run. Her serve is sent over, dug out there by Hampton. Now coming the other way, the Terps deflected out of bounds, so it's a Penn State point and we're not at 15. Will be Keaton Holcomb to serve again, the Belleville, Texas native. who's had an impact on defense here in her senior season. And her serve is sent over, played out by Rath. Alford sets, now looking for Katie Myers, who tries to get one through, but Penn State able to dig it back out. Alford sets for Myers again. It's dug back out again. Now coming through the other way, a dig by Alford. A set by Rebus for Gardner. She tries to play it on the front line. Penn State able to play it back out. Now a light tap over by Tori Gurrell. Set by Alford, far side for Gardner, who's denied at the net. An aggressive stop there from Caitlin Horde and Tori Gurrell. Take another look here as on the near side, it was Penn State's front line there to make the stop. Holcomb still on the serve for Penn State. She tips one off the top, the Terps have no shot at it. The service ace gives Penn State a two-point lead. And that's almost the most unfortunate type of serve that the receiving team can have if it just clips the tape and rolls over. There's no one there to get it. Keaton Holcomb on it now. She sends it over, played out by Riva, set for Myers. And she drops one through the front line, able to get another point for the Terps, and they're within one again. Now you have to think the Terps might be thinking they're gonna need to pull away if they wanna win in this set, because if they keep it this back and forth, eventually someone's gonna be able to win by two if it gets there. Will be Samantha Burgio on the serve. She sends it over, played up there, looking for Horde, and she's gonna poke one right through the Terps' front line, rolling off of Myers and Gardner, and it drops through into the middle, and it's a two-point Penn State lead again. Nice crowd on hand here at the Xfinity Center. Terps getting the opportunity to play on the main court. Their first match here since 2017. Johnny Parker on the serve is far too strong. And it's a point for Maryland as she looked to place it on the back line. Katie Myers on the serve with an opportunity now to tie it again. This time would be at 18 as the Terps trail by one. And Myers' serve is sent over. Played out by the Nittany Lions. Now Gorell is blocked. Penn State able to force it through. Alford sets, Jones, spike, kill. Raynell Jones gets another one tonight, and the Terps have tied it at 18. 
And that all started with a pass from Myers playing in the back row because she has the serve right now. And she set that all up for her team. Katie Myers will serve again, and she's too strong on it. The service error brings the ball back to Penn State with a one-point lead. 